The following is a presentation of iRacing on PTR TV. We'd like to thank all of our channel partners for their support. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. Upstate New York is the location for tonight's festivities. We've been all around the country from, from the bull rings of Lima Land and Kokomo to the world famous tracks such as Eldora and Knoxville. Tonight in upstate New York, we head to another famous track that houses the Super Dirt Car Series along with the USAC and the World of Outlaws. And tonight we're gonna take the Master Millwright Big Block Series and test them out here out on the three quarter mile all three tenths of a mile track here at Weedsport. Apologies for the typo on the screen. Welcome everyone to PTR TV, where tonight we do have coverage of indeed the TNR Master Millwright Big Block Series, and I will be giving you the pictures and the commentary for race number 10 here on the night. Currently hot lapping around this racetrack, getting ready for our 35 lap feature event here as we have uh, Zach Wise and Flew currently on the racetrack. We'll bring up the top ticker and let you know where the times do stand at the moment. <clears throat> Brady Cornett is here this week. He was not present last week, uh, which did cause a little bit of a shakeup in the standings and kind of gave a free uh, a free pass for other drivers to actually get a chance um, to win. So, uh, of course, they did appreciate that. I don't have the live point standings because from what I can see, they have not been updated, but I may have just uh, missed out on that. But either way, it looks like Bobby Trapper uh, has gone top of the board thus far uh, with a lap time of 15.03 and uh, waiting to see what Cornet does. Uh, as he's currently on track right now. <clears throat> and a very short track here at Weedsport. You, do, you do have to worry, if you do decide to rip the inside fence, do have to worry uh, about some of the awkward walls here towards the inside of the track. They do jut out at very awkward times, especially there in turn four. If you're running too low, can hit a very awkward port part of the fence here. Brady Cornett does exactly uh, what we're used to him doing and goes top of the board here. Only driver to break into the 14 second bracket with a 95. Keith Carba, only other car on track. Looks like we have 12 drivers here signed up. That's about the average here. And, uh, you know, pretty loyal group of drivers uh, in this series. If you're interested in joining, uh, of course, you could send us a message in chat or, uh, you know, we can lead you in the right direction. Uh, for tonight's race, since there's no sound, um, to be a little more specific to that because there, everything looks good from my side. I just trying to figure out any kind of problem here. Just got some message in chat. We're just going back here and just rewatching a little bit. Just give me a second. I just went back and rewatched a couple seconds of the stream, and um, I do hear sound, so uh, not too sure what the uh, the inquiry was there in chat, but hopefully it is alleviated for you. Again, a minute left here in the session. We'll have our traditional setup of two heats, most likely consisting of six drivers apiece. Those will be ten lappers, uh, and that'll put us right into our feature event, and we do have the invert top four uh, in the heats do get the invert, which usually gives us a, uh, a good comers and goers situation uh, in the feature. From the long shot here, you kind of see the top down view here from Weedsport. Not a perfect oval, kind of has that uh, Volusia-esque back straightaway here that kind of gives you the continuous wrap around a three and four. 
uh, which does facilitate. And we do have uh, that situation fixed. It actually wasn't an issue with the music being too loud. The music is the same volume. There was just a, uh, a settings issue that glitched uh, that kind of muted Discord entirely. So we will have uh, interviews with the background music and everything should be just fine this evening. If it's not, uh, well, I'll just go and uh, run off cliff, but I don't think that will happen, but that is the end of the timer here, uh, clicking down to zero, so let's get ready to head down trackside and give you the starting lineup for heat race number one here on the evening. Getting ready here, lining up on the front straightaway heat race number one. On the front row for that is going to be Mike Brewer with Zach Weisenflu. Going to be in that second spot. Brady Corna in third with Kyle Rochinski in fourth. And then Travis Brockner in fifth and Keith Carba uh, in that sixth spot. Again, uh, we will be running 10 laps around this place and uh, we'll see what the track progression is uh, over the course of the evening. Let's take a quick look at our weather conditions here today uh, from upstate New York in the virtual world. 64 air, 48. I didn't, I literally did not even know the track temp went that low in iRacing. Uh, so that is, uh, that is news to me entirely uh, that it even does that. But either way, that is the starting lineup for the heat and... It's like Brewer, a little bit delayed there uh, on the throttle, getting this thing uh, up and ready for pacing here. They'll get behind that iRacing pace truck. And some kind of bright, blinding lights there to the inside, if, I, uh, if I've ever seen them before. Kind of akin to a NASCAR. Look at that one right there. Oh, my gosh. Uh, of course, from the drivers, you don't see it because they're facing the opposite direction from a broadcast perspective. Those lights are uh, kind of right in your face there, so we'll just have to... Kind of look away from those or find some different camera angles if they are available here. But one to go here. We'll see what happens. Very frequently we see that outside lane here in these big blocks uh, fire off better than the inside. It's happened on quite a few occasions. Uh, so we'll see if Brewer can get that jump on Wisenflu. We know Wisenflu trying to get that win and uh, trying to take advantage of the situation here while he is starting to head a Cornette. We'll see if he can uh, get that lead and uh, have that the max points for the heat. But I know Brewer will be trying uh, to fix that situation for sure as Pace Car has pulled off of the racetrack and the green flag's in the air. A little bit of contact there between Wise and Flu and Cornette. Cornette immediately going to go to that second position here on lap number one right off the get-go here. Now they're going to be chasing uh, Mike Brewer looking to the inside of the track. Brewer running that second lane, keeping the momentum up there. That's going to force Cornette to run a little bit lower on the track. And the momentum is harder to hold down there. Again, a little bit narrow here too at Weedsport which does make it a little bit harder as well. Wise and Flu try to figure out where to go. As long as Brewer can hold that line up top, he should be okay, but he drifted up a little bit higher than he probably wanted to there. Opened up the door a little bit more than he intended to for Cornette, who's going to try to slide up the track, force Brewer up the track, take his momentum away, but Brewer's still hanging on by a, by a quarter of a car length there, but I think he's finally going to lose it here through one and two. A little bit of contact there between Brewer and Wise that flew off a two, headed into three. Wise that flew down the track. Looks like he's going to drift up, try to do the same thing that Cornette did. They're still going to be door to door for second as uh, Cornette is taking advantage and trying to pull away. Travis Brockner, Rochinski, and Karba. Uh, Karba all the way slow there. I don't know if that's going to bring out a caution. He's kind of just, I think, trying to get back to the. I don't know what he's trying to do. He's trying to pull off the track or something. Uh, but still side-by-side side for that second spot. Brewer really fighting hard. Again, remember that the transfer spot is 5th and 6th. Uh, so 5th and 6th will stay in that same position. But Brockner currently in the spot to uh, have the leader position for the feature. A little bit of bump and run almost from Brewer to Wisenflu there. Entering one, but Wisenflu is going to take the sole possession of second. Cornette has pulled away by about three-quarters of a second off the get-go here as we come down to the final three laps in our heat session. Brewer has not give, gave, uh, given up on the second spot, trying to run that low line on Cornette if he can, rather on Wisenflu if he can. 
uh, but just not able to. It looks like he's driving it in a little bit deeper and then paying the price for it on corner exit. Get on that curved back straightaway, kind of akin to Chicago led for the NASCAR fans or Volusia. Uh, again, for the Dirt Oval Tribe, which is, of course, where we are this evening. Two to go here. Cornet did not get a good corner there at all. Cost him almost two tenths. Two wise and flew. Uh, but either way, it does not matter because we're on that was the white flag, and that is the checkers. So heat one goes to Cornet. Of course, he's going to have that uh, detriment in the heat start in the feature starting lineup, but he'll pay the price for it and uh, take the better result. As uh, let's get ready for the lineup for heat session number two. For this heat, Bobby Puckett is going to be leader of this session with Jason Freeman, the admin in second. Bobby Trapper, uh, he is the race sponsor as well. I didn't, I should note that in just a second. Brad Rubel in fourth, Eric Bonham in fifth, and Carter Rochinski is uh, going to be sixth here this evening. And uh, that does remind me to bring up the logo here for Traps Sheet Metal and Roofing, uh, Bobby Trapper's company. I am uh, inferring, uh, just based on name, that it is the case, but it is, it is the race sponsor. Of course, Master, Master Millwright is the league sponsor, uh, but for the individual race put on by Traps. So course check them out if uh, it is regionally available for you to do so again Jason Freeman is on the outside of the front row he's had a few good runs this season I thought he had a chance to win a couple races this season I remember he did have a great run at Kokomo I believe it was um, until he put himself on his roof a few times he always manages to come back though so when he does have a poor uh, heat or uh, opening segment of the race always does manage to uh, get himself situated uh, back into a good position. So uh, my gut tells me that he will probably be able to do uh, the same here this evening. But Bobby Puckett going to be there. Bobby Trapper uh, always one to look for, as is Brian Rubel. Eric Bottom has had a couple, uh, you know, sh bright shining points on the season. Carter Ochinski, uh can't really say the same about him, but always a good trooper in uh, trying his best here in these events. But we are on one to go. Going to get ready for, again, 10 laps to go. We saw the quick work that Cornette did to go from about third to first and take the first heat. We'll see if indeed similar events happen or maybe Puckett can pull off and uh, just drive off into the proverbial moonset here at Weedsport. But let's see what happens here as the pace truck has already pulled and exited the speedway. Uh, left front's in the air. That means we're on the gas. A green, green, green flag here for heat number two. Puckett has uh, sole possession of the lead. Going to do that diamond approach there to the corner. Get a good run on exit. Looks like Rubel a little bit. Uh, something happened to him. Some contact or something because he is back there uh, in the fifth spot. Not where we expect him. I thought I saw him slowed up there, but back up to the front. Puckett still holding that lead over Freeman. Trapper uh, back in the third spot. And Trapper kind of doing that slide in approach. Trapper had that win a few weeks ago. I cannot remember the track for the life of me where it was. Uh, but Trapper did have a win. Uh, it'll come back to me in due course as I uh, try to look back at our schedule. It may have been Kokomo. Um, I'm trying to remember, but here we are up front. This is for the heat lead. Up the track a little higher than intended, I believe, is Pocket. That's going to open the door for Freeman. A little bit of contact, perhaps, entering three. Freeman's going to try to hold it down there. Got to watch out for that turn four wall. Completing another lap. Closing in on the halfway point. Pocket going high on the track. Freeman's going to try to get the run down low. They kind of meet on exit. Freeman racing respectfully, giving him the room there on exit. Uh, though it is sometimes difficult to do so on the inside. You can see the entry of one starting to slick it off. That's going to force Puckett a little bit higher up the track, but he may actually use it to his advantage there as he is going to get the run on down the straightaway. But Freeman doing a great job keeping the momentum up, even though he's bogged down on the inside of the track there, entering the corner already past the halfway point. These guys running side by side for many a lap. Great racing here. At Weedsport, looks like Freeman may be able to get it if he can put the power down on exit there. 
But just as I say that, I'm going to run off a four for Pocket. And he's using that real d extreme diamond line, if you want to call it that. Kind of pinches it down a little bit more here in three and four. And Freeman's going to get it, but they're going to cross paths off a of four contact. Puckett was the one that paid the price for it. Now he's going to lose the momentum. Here comes Trapper. Trapper kind of hit the little pit wall there off a of two. That slowed him up. So now Freeman is just going to pull off here and uh, probably just drive off to the victory in this one. As we're on two laps to go, not missing much beyond this uh, between Bonham, uh, Rubel, and Carter Rochinski. Uh, kind of tail end of the caboose here, but coming off of the corner here, that was the white, that is the checker. Heat's gonna go to Freeman. So Freeman and Cornette gonna be our winners here for our heats. And now we're gonna get racked up for the feature event here, 35 laps from Weedsport. Starting lineup for the feature event, Kyle Rochinski gonna be on the front row. He's gonna have Eric Bonham to his outside. Travis Brockner inside of row two with Bobby Trapper on the outside of row two. Mike Brewer in fifth, Bobby Puckett in sixth, Zach Wise flew in seventh, Jason Freeman in eighth, Brady Cornette in ninth. Then we're going to have Brian Rubel in 10th, Keith Carba at 11th, and then Carter Rochinski 12th, and Shotgun on the field here this evening. So we'll see what happens. We've had a couple races in a row uh, within the series that have been uh, rather caution-ridden uh, in the features, so we'll see how Weedsport does fare. I mean, it is slightly narrow, and uh, it does have the confines of the walls um, rather than it kind of being a wide open track uh, in terms of space, you know, such as uh, such as like a Kokomo, which has a lot more space to the inside, Eldora, nice wide track. Uh, but this is a lot narrower of a track with some different walls, so I can foresee that someone's going to be upside down. I think someone's going to hit the wall at awkward spots, but uh, we'll see how the racing is. The track does reset. Uh, to a, a low degree, I do believe, for the features. Uh, you can see the entries of the corners has been cleaned up as uh, they have done a little bit of prep work to the facility. So that will give a little bit of grip back that these drivers did lose as lights out on the pace truck. Pace truck will pull off and exit the racetrack. Of course, pits on the outside here at Weedsport. So the pace truck will take the hard right hand turn, and the field will be in the hands of Kyle Rochinski in the 21. Rochinski has been on the verge of some wins this season, but hasn't been able to put the whole race together. We'll see if tonight is a different story. We'll watch the natural story of Cornette and company driving through the field. Green flag in the air for the feature event. Stack up there off of four, coming to the green flag. Already have some contact. Wise and flew there, and Brewer making some contact there throughout the back of the field. And we're already going to be under the yellow flag. Freeman, uh, see somebody in chat rooting for Freeman. Well, his race not starting off um, in a way that he would be happy with. We'll try to check it out on replay if we can. Replay on screen. Um, try to get a better look at that if I can. All right, have a second view on screen. I think I see what happened to him. He was trying to avoid. Yeah, he just he turned right to avoid uh, Wise and flew there, and he ultimately uh, of, to evade the wreck. He ended up putting himself at the fence. So, you know, kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Now uh, they do get one fast repair, one quick fix, one backup car. Uh, whatever you want to call it, everyone has a different name for it. Uh, so I don't know if he has already used it. I actually do have the magic tools here to find out if he did use it. Uh, he did not, so we'll see how that thing does drive, because that was uh, wheels straight in the fence here. Of course, these, these big blocks, basically open wheel cars. I mean, open wheel with a huge body, but the wheels are very vulnerable. So uh, we'll see how that thing does drive after that one. 
But again, I saw that stack up happen off of four. Again, that pit wall, I can't talk about it enough. That pit wall there, they put it in to protect that those infield lights there. Uh, so there's that pit wall, and depending how you take the corner, if you try to do that late apex, if you mistime it or misjudge it, boom, you have that wall right there. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we didn't really complete a lap, but we'll, uh, we'll reset and basically start anew here for the second restart of the evening. Pace truck will take that turn out, and Rochinski choosing the inside lane. We saw a lot of outside being cho chosen last week, but the inside uh, where these guys want to be. There goes the pace truck with the right-hand turn. Back on the loud pedal, green flag in the air. Looks like everybody gets through turn four uh, smoothly that time by. Uh, or so I say that as Cornette up on his roof. And that'll throw us out on another immediate caution. Haven't gotten any racing in here in the feature this evening. Replay on screen. See what happened. That's Puckett just in front of Cornette there. Wise and flew just behind. Wise and flew there uh, in the left rear of Cornette. I believe. I don't know if they're direct teammates, but I know they do work together. So. Um, obviously not going to be too happy about that, and Cornette is still on his lid. I don't know if he's waiting for, uh, that's Travis Brockner there. I think he, uh, there goes Wise and Flew. He's like, well, I put you on your lid. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll flip you back over. He did just that. So, I put you on your lid. I'll put you back on your wheels. And, uh, I don't... I don't know if he will, I mean, caution laps do not count, of course, so. A, we don't know how that thing drives, just looking at it, it doesn't look like it drives very well. Uh, Wise and Flew kind of stopped there to the outside of the track. I think he has to give the spot back, so I don't know where Cornette actually shook out. Um, if he lost anything, of course, timing doesn't really update too well on the DNC caution, so really don't know uh, if he lost a lap or anything, but... Either way, I think we've had a combined 300 feet of racing here um, in the feature event. So that turn four definitely seeming to be very difficult here at Weedsport, getting them stacked up and then entering one. Uh, they're just all on top of each other, just don't have a way to evade it. So we'll see what happens here. Still on, oh, there is the ticker over to one to go. So we'll, uh, we'll try this one more time. Of course, every time there is a caution, uh, we do, com even if we don't complete the lap, um, because caution left to not count, it does kind of tick over one lap at a time. So we didn't complete lap one, but we technically are going to take lap three uh, upon the completion of this lap right here. Pace truck is in. Rochinski on the lot pedal very early in the zone, getting us back to green. I think he tried to spread out the field there by going super early and it seemed to work as we're scrolling through the field and looks like everybody is situated so I think we'll get some racing in this time by Bobby Trapper in a second. Trap, Trapper trying to run that inside lane as good as he can. Rochinski going to run the super high lane all the way up to the fence. Now they're going to cut and do that diamond off of two. Trapper is going to take the lead. He's going to be able to clear. Rochinski going to try to ride the fence. Got to watch out for the, uh, the exit there. As the fence does go away. Oh, I see stuff going on. Mike Brewer having issues. He stopped against the turn four wall, and that'll be a caution flag. Let's see what happened here. Brewer, oh, yep, he, that turn four wall. Let's see if I, uh, maybe we can go on board with him. And get a better look at it. Come on. Overlays are just very laggy this evening, so apologies I'm a little bit slow on the camera switches, guys. Trying to load things up here, but things are just not working the way I want to this evening. Technology, of course, just does those things to you. Another caution here on the evening.
All right, we'll get back to live footage here. I'm going to do a quick little reset of the overlays here and see if I can get them working a little bit faster. Shouldn't be anything uh, that detracts too much from the broadcast. Just might have a little uh, delay in uh, camera cuts, but uh, we're just going to reset these real quick. May just have a slightly extended onboard here. Again, I tell you everybody, most everybody watching this is probably a sim racing fan um, in some capacity. So I always tell you, don't do Windows updates. If you're happy with how Windows is going, just keep it. Because very, very, there's, there's basically nothing that's going to happen that's ever uh, going to make things better for you. But the green flag's back in the air again. We're going to stay on board here, I guess, and watch this uh, from Trapper's perspective. Green flag still going here. You can see that's Freeman. That's uh, Keith Carba just in front. You can see uh, Rochinski in the, the top of the screen here. Once things tick over, they're just about to tick over here. So we'll be able to change the cameras here. Again, just overlays being slow. So just work with what we got, folks. That's just the name of the game here. Take, a, take technology. Take what it gives you. Here we go back to things are being much more responsive here. So here we are back to proper footage. And Trapper has that lead, Rochinski in second, Puckett in third, Rubel in fourth. We are very spread out here. That's Rubel in fourth, Travis Brockner in fifth. You can see the different lines here in play. Brady Cornette in the sixth spot. See Cornette kind of running the high lane and then cutting on exit. A lot of different ways around the Weedsport racetrack here. You can see Cornette all the way down to the bottom. Got to watch out for that fence. Brockner's going to go high on the track, give him that spot with relative ease. Just behind that, we have Freeman, we have Weisenflu, we have Brewer. They're going to go three wide there off of four. Brewer really struggling with that wall to the inside of the racetrack. You can see we go on board here with him. I know we, we just were, but now we're doing it intentfully he's going to go down you can see that wall you just have to be careful but when you're wrapping the inside uh you the these guys are really starting to struggle with that wall Cornette not making uh, the progress he needs i don't know if that flip has caused him to struggle with the handling on that car uh, maybe he does need that fast repair but he is up to fifth but he's three seconds off the lead bobby trapper uh just lighting him up here and you know put Taking them up, putting them down here. Last time by a 15.49 to a 15.7 for Kyle Rochinski. And that is gonna, and now we're gonna be under caution. Let's see if we can find, I think it may have been Freeman, but we'll get confirmation of that. All right, we're just gonna, I, I'm, I gotta preserve the integrity of the broadcast, folks. Every time I go to instant replay, it is just causing things to lag uh, quite radically. So I don't want to hurt the overall integrity of the broadcast and put things behind and lagging. So uh, we're just gonna try, probably gonna cut replays for the evening because I just don't want uh, to have to keep resetting things and causing a negative experience. And, I'm aware YouTube chat is pretty much every channel has issues with these uh, adult bots of sorts, so we just have to kind of deal with them. But I did see quickly before things kind of got laggy on me in the background that Freeman did have issues of sorts, and so now he is up uh, to the tail end of the field, as you can see there on the camera shot. So. Not the best evening for him, but Puckett had a two and a half second lead or so on these guys, and he's definitely trying his best to uh, put them away. So he wants this thing to stay green. I think he even has the pace um, on Cornette here, but Cornette's going to have 
the advantage of closing back in if he can get by, uh, you know, four guys, Trapper, Ochinski, Puckett, and Rubel to get himself up front for another win on the season, but definitely not going to be easy. Nonetheless, Pace Truck is out. On the lot pedal is Trapper, but I'll tell you, Rochinski stayed right with him there. I don't think he has the pace, but he got a good restart. He's going to get to use that loose stuff on the top and get a little bit of momentum. And I uh, thought he was going to be able to do something with it as Trapper is really running that low line. There goes Cornette, who's having some issues, some blinking going on. Going to spin in front of the field and get murdered by Freeman there. Actually, that wasn't Freeman. He got murdered by one of the Rochinskis there. Rochinski is uh, out of the circuit uh, in the pits. I will see if we can get a replay of this because uh, I really want to be able to see that one. Caught some of it live. All right, let's see. I want to see what happened here from a distance. Yeah, Cornette just got pile-driven. That was Carter Rochinski in the 020 right there. Uh, that absolutely just sent him for a ride. I think Cornette did retire from the race on that as well. Actually, I, well, things are working all right. Let's get, we do have a replay on screen. It is seeming to catch up here. Cornette has retired. They were three wide. He b had some blinking issues. Cornette, uh, not Cornette, Puckett made some contact with him there. And then, boom, that was the murder on top of the light poles there. So, Cornette did call it after that. Again, I don't have the, the standings. I can't find updated standings here. This is, I don't see that they've been updated um, really since Kokomo, at least if the Dan Lisa or the Sim Racers hub that I have is accurate. So, um, a couple bad races in a row for Cornette, and I know he missed one, so the standings might actually be a lot closer uh, than you would think but we'll have to see if we can get those updated at some point. But try again. We are nearly to the halfway point. I think we're on a, um, I don't have the exact number because the, the overlay won't be correct, but uh, we're on about our fifth or sixth yellow right now. So this race is uh, definitely taking its time and you know, having its issues. And we do have t one retiree. Well, I thought Cornette retired. It told me it did, but he must have got his fast repair. So he's back in it with a fresh car. Green flag back in the air. Trapper on the loud pedal gets himself out to his advantage. Cornette, rather, uh, Rochinski drives on in. They're three wide. Rubel makes contact with Brewer. Freeman rocking the fence there, getting stuck on the wall. Uh, having issues there with Cornette. Cornette gets by. Freeman having issues here on the evening, and now we're going to have a caution. I believe if I'm not mistaken, that the, the only reason this caution came out uh, was because Rochinski entered the track in that manner. I think that's what it was. But I, uh, I don't know. I didn't see anything else obvious uh, that caused it. So, put us under caution again. Can't really get any kind of flow tonight, but yeah, this track definitely showing to be rather difficult for these guys, and I think they are waiting on the pace truck. Uh, we may have a... Now, there's the pace truck, so obviously some scoring issues with how that caution came out, and Letting the pace truck get by, and now everybody will get situated behind it, and we'll try it again. Again, I, I believe from what I saw that that caution was just stem from Carter getting on the track. Under green, of course, I racing triggers cautions. If a car is sideways and another car passes a car that is sideways, uh, it'll throw it a caution. So when you're exiting the pit, when you're entering the track in that manner, you are in fact sideways to the competition. So basically, it does throw out a caution, just due to the nature of algorithms. But we're gonna try it one more time. Looks like Trapper gonna choose the outside lane. I don't think that's uh, been done yet this evening. Still doing the double file restart. Sometimes they transition to single file on these rougher races, but. 
still sticking with the double file formations for the time being here. But Trapper is going to get back on that loud pedal. Green flag in the air. We'll try it once more. Carter, I mean, rather, Kyle Rochinski going to drive straight to the top. He's going to open the door for Wise and Flu, who's made a comeback. He's going to be to the inside. Brewer just behind in that third spot. Brewer's working his way back up, but Wise and Flu is going to try to clear for second over Kyle Rochinski. He's going to try to get it. I think he's going to clear. Kyle's going to try to get a run on the exit. Not going to be able to do so, so move the 24 into P2 here. Let's see if he has anything for Trapper. As you can see, Brewer here closing in. Freeman again making a comeback. Just behind that, Puckett and Cornet back in seven. Th through the middle of the jungle there. Here comes Battle for the lead. Wise and Flew really to the back bumper of Trapper here. Trapper using that top of the racetrack, so Wise and Flu's gonna have to use the inside, and he's finding some grip on that inside lane. Digging down there, gonna watch out for that wall. They're gonna be side by side, and he's gonna be right to his inside. They watch him drift up the track, but he can't get the power down on exit, just the nature of the beast. Running these inside lanes, watch out for that wall. There's a little bit of grip down there, and I think he found it. Another lap ticks off here. Let's take a look from our blimp, our chopper cam. And you can kind of see the perspective here as they are side by side. Brewer and Rochinski third and fourth. You can see he's trying to hold on to that grip, but that's where that wall sticks out. He actually had him there through the e exit of four, but upon the entry of the straightaway, just couldn't keep the power down, couldn't keep the momentum up, but he did a really good job off of two. Let's see, he might be able to send in clear. Trapper's all the way in the loose stuff. He's clear, but Trapper's gonna have the run on the top and he's gonna actually get him at the line. As here we are closing in on one to 10 to go. Trapper's gotta watch out. He's nearly in the fence there. Still a good battle going on third and fourth, but we gotta keep our eyes focused on the battle for the lead. Trapper really using that top lane to his advantage. Wise and Flu dedicated to the bottom here. They're probably trading laps at this point by who's led the most, but Trapper is so good at running that super high lane an inch off the fence, but he's just losing an inch every single lap, and I think Wise and Flu may have him, but nope, we're going to be interrupted by the caution flag. Just going through the field here, and again, nothing stands out to me that caused that wreck, so I don't want to scroll... Uh, aimlessly in chat. I mean, I don't want to scroll aimlessly and just try to find something, but just looking through the field here, nothing stood out to me as a cause for that wreck, so... Just... But either way, that was some phenomenal, nice, clean driving uh, between Trapper and Wisenflu up for that top spot. And we'll see. It looks like Wisenflu has the faster car, but it's harder to get that power down. He was so close. He probably could have shut the door on him. Maybe he'll shut the door, uh, you know, with a couple laps to go. But earlier in the race, you kind of want to give that blessing of opportunity and, you know, that camaraderie of racing cleaner and fairer. But you can't race fair if you want to win a race towards the end. You got to, you know, take what's yours and, you know, take that space. And I think Wise and Flu is going to set himself up for that. The Trapper, so good at running up that line right on the cushion. That's what won him the race at Kokomo a few weeks ago, if memory serves. Because everybody else would get in the fence, but he could do it without making that contact. So we'll see what happens here. If we're on one to go. Lights are out on the pace truck. I do, well, lights are out, but the ticker hasn't changed over, but looks like we are on one to go. And I think we have switched to single file. So this will be the first single file restart of the evening. That should actually keep them a little bit closer, or at least potentially it does. With green flags in the air, Trapper gets that good straight shot off of four. And just as I thought they were, it's going to stay closer. Not at all. Trapper is going to get a half second lead right off the get go here. Wisenfoo is going to have to use that speed in the game, but here comes Brewer. Brewer is known for running that low groove, known for hanging on and running that inside and having that patience down there and he's going to try to put that to use once more but if he's going to want to go for the win he's going to really have to make quick work of Wisenflu which is not going to be an easy feat as the pace truck 
is back on circuit and you can see here from the long shot that it's Brian Rubel uh, in the pits trying to figure out exactly what happened to him yeah it's just really hard here on the dirt guys to to find the cautions uh, it's because it doesn't always take an a, a big incident to cause one. So, I thought it was Ruble. Something happened to Ruble uh, while we were focusing on that battle for the lead. But again, I can't find a cause of caution, and I don't want to just sit here and you know hold everybody up on a waiting screen uh, while I find what could be just a very minute incident. Everybody seemed up to speed. Everybody is still on the track except for Ruble, uh, who is in the pits here. Again, our grandstands are blocking our view. He does, he is uh, currently on a three minute pit stop. So, whatever has been done to him uh, is likely catastrophic. Might be sitting out and just watching the end of this, but. We are on one to go, so we were single file last time by. I think we'll probably do the same uh, on this upcoming restart. Looks like that'll be confirmed here. So that silver bullet, number 69 of Bobby Trapper. Going to try to hold off that number 24 of Zach Weisenflu. Trying to make out the sponsors there. Uh, if I can, but I couldn't quite do it. Green flag in the air. They're going to race the pace truck off the racetrack. Green flag back in the air. Closing in, I believe, seven laps to go. To the top goes Trapper. To the bottom goes Wisenflu. They're going to meet in the middle off of turn number two. Wisenflu got a much better start this time by. That's going to give him the opportunity to keep digging for the win here. Coming off of four, he's going to lose about two-tenths of a second. I think he's going to have to really run that top get closer and then dive on the inside when he has a little bit more of a run, but he's really trying to low roll the track, even on the straightaways, hold on to that little bit of moisture on the inside groove, and it's working, uh, but is it gonna work enough for the win? That's gonna be the million dollar question, but Brewer just there in third, just behind. You can see Rochinski, uh, Kyle Rochinski, Freeman in Cornet, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Cornet not gonna be a factor here for this win. Here we go for another lap. It looks like uh, Wisenflu has it figured out, but Brewer is going to really put the pressure on Wisenflu there because Brewer likes to run the bottom. And look at Trapper running the fence up there. Brewer is just kind of following each line, doesn't quite know where to go. Nearly in the back of Wisenflu there, off of four. Brewer trying to slow roll the bottom of the racetrack, but is as is Wisenflu here. We're coming to two laps to go, and we're side by side for the win. Is it going to be the top or the bottom? Which line is going to persevere, Wisenflu or Trapper? We're going to find out after this caution flag. And no question on what caused this one. It's going to be Travis Brockner in an inverted state. He did a right rear in the wall. Wall ride, couldn't land, couldn't stick the landing. So now it's going to put all the pressure on this upcoming restart now. Wisenflu didn't get a good restart two restarts ago. He got a fabulous one the last time by, and ultimately this race is going to boil down to whether or not he can get another one of those solid restarts because he definitely... If he doesn't slide the tires, if he doesn't overdrive the entry, he definitely has what it takes to make that inside lane work. He might lose it in a photo finish. He might win it in a photo finish. He might do a mega slider. Maybe uh, Trapper is going to have to do an all-time crossover. But the, the opportunity is definitely there. But Brewer lurking behind in the third spot. What can he do? Is he going to interrupt this? Is he going to be a factor? He definitely could slow roll the bottom like the best of them, but if Wisenflu is running that inside lane and Trapper's running the fence, uh, Brewer is going to be limited in what his opportunities are going to be, but you know he's going to find whatever is available. Uh, but here we come off of turn number two. Lights are out on the pace truck. 
And we're going to try it again. And coming into a green-white checker, I think we're going to technically spill over into some overtime here. Is a little bit of contact there. Wise and Flu tried to time it, but didn't quite time it well enough. Trapper is going to get about a two-tenths second lead. Wrapping the bottom of the track is Wise and Flu there. He's going to be about a car length back. I don't know if he's going to be able to gate it. He's going to rock the fence here, try to get a little bit closer as we're going to take the white flag lap here one more time around Weedsport. Here comes Brewer to the inside, trying to get a run on Wiseflu, but the door was shut on him. Now Wiseflu drops back about a car length or two. I don't think he's going to have anything in the tank. He's going to send it on the bottom just for one more opportunity, but Trapper to the top of the track with the momentum. Bobby Trapper with the victory here at Weedsport with Wise and Flu in second, and Mike Brewer will round out the podium here this evening, and celebratory destruction goes on here um, off of the exit of the corners here as, uh, call it victory beatings or something, whatever you want to call it, but Bobby Trapper getting the victory here on the evening. So let's go ahead and wrap up and give you the final rundown of results here from the Weedsport Speedway. Bobby Trapper with that victory tonight. Zach Weisenflu gets the second. Mike Brewer with a solid third place here on the evening. Kyle Rochinski holds on for a fourth with Jason Freeman in the fifth spot. Brady Cornett in, comes back to a sixth. Bobby Puckett in seventh. Keith Carba in eighth. Uh, Travis Brockner in ninth. Carter Rochinski in the tenth spot. And then rounding out the field, the only other two out drivers here, Brian Rubel and Eric Bottom. Chat, let me know if you can actually hear him talk. I'm 99.99% .99 sure you can, uh, but just let me know if you can actually hear them uh, when we start the interviews here as uh, trying to find them on screen if we can. Uh, that light is really in the way here. There we go. That's a better look of Bobby Trapper. All right, Bobby, PTR TV, you got a copy, man? Yeah, I got you. All right, man, so you definitely got intense there with Wise and Flu there. You, he had you, you in that side-by-side -side battle for laps on laps on laps, but you lucked out and got a better restart on him there and uh, managed to pull away by a couple carlings to the win here at Weedsport. Talk about your race, man. Yeah, I think... Uh really fun race with Zach there. I know we're side by side. He's down the bottom there. Quite a few laps and unfortunately all his cautions came out because I think I uh, would have loved to see it stay green and uh, put on a good show going back and forth. But I think that last restart, he just uh, tried to time it a little bit. I felt the bump in the back and tried to go right then and capitalize on his mistake. And luckily, I think uh, we're able to hold on thanks to that. Yeah, I know. I think your other win this season, I want to say it was Kokomo, correct me on it, but there was another race this season that you won, kind of in similar fashion, where everybody else tries to rock the fence like that, and they're pounding the right rear, right on the right in the fence, but you can really run that high line, cut down for that diamond. What does it take to run that high line, get the right rear right on the fence, but not make that contact? I think it's just a fine line and having a lot of laps on the track and knowing what you're doing. I think I'm much better at the smaller tracks here. I think uh, last week we got the win there at Cedar Lake, another small track, and uh, luckily just uh, a little better on these small tracks than them and the big ones. Yeah, so we'll see what the rest of the season brings for you in that capacity, man. But a victory here on the evening. Who do you want to give a shout out to? Got to thank uh, Total Nonstop Racing and Master Mulray for putting the series on, and Rubel and Garrett and Jason Freeman, everyone else for hosting us every week. I appreciate uh, the racing and have, uh, look forward to it next week. All right, sounds good, man. Congrats, and we'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. Thank you. And now, second place, Zach Wiseflu. Zach, you, ha you put basically every, th every opportunity on the table. I know you probably had the faster car there rocking that inside, but the restarts were your foot, where you're, uh, you're positive and your negative. And unfortunately, that last one wasn't as good as you needed it to be. Uh, talk about the battle there with Trapper. Yeah, that was definitely a fun battle. I mean, me and Trapper, we raced clean every single time. You know, we had our incident last week at Cedar Lake when uh, he picked up the W, but restarts were really a killer he was just he was on point didn't light the tires up every time like i did yeah he and i know that last when you tried to time it, he said that he saw you try to time it and then as soon as you hit him you know he knew to go and that put you back there but just talk about the race overall i know a lot of people were having trouble with just the layout here at weedsport those walls that jut out and kind of causing the track to stack up but what were the the main issues you saw and did you have any uh close calls at all 
Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a it was definitely a rough race. I think I was involved in, I think two wrecks and. But I mean, everyone just needs to check up on restarts, especially going into one and two, because it's such a diamond line and it's not a not so much of a circle type of racetrack where you can just barrel it into the corner and the car's going to stick for you and you're going to be fast. You really got to pedal the car through the corner and really drive it off. But I don't know. There was there was some pretty rough calls made. I mean, when I got into the back of Brady there at the beginning of the race, they said it was my fault, but then they were calling chain reaction deals. I mean, it is what it is, but. We'll move on to the next race of Fairbury, and hopefully I'll be in victory lane. Yeah, we'll see what you can do, man. You gave a good show. I know you're kind of podiumed out with these seconds. I know you want to get a couple more you know, opportunities on the top of the podium. We'll see what happens, but who do you want to give a shout-out to? I mean, I just got to thank Ruble, uh, Freeman, you, you for streaming the race every time, but we're going to hope that we come back a little stronger next time. All right, sounds good, man. We'll watch it and see what happens. Thank you. And we'll see if we got third here. Uh, Mike Brewer. Oh, yeah, he's right there in front of my face. That's why I couldn't see him. Thought you're right there in front of my face, Mike. I couldn't see it, but there you are right there. Got you with the third place there. Had a good battle with uh, Wise and Flu. I know you like to rock the bottom, but he was, he was running your line there. And narrow track really had nowhere to go, but you still get a good podium finish. Talk about your night. Yeah, it was a good night. You know, it started fifth there. I I wrecked myself there coming out of four. Like, it, those walls on the inside, man, they just step out. You just clip it, that left side, man, it'll send you for one heck of a ride. So we went to the back there, and uh, I just took my time, you know, tried to drive cautious. I, I don't think I even really got into too many people there, but uh, managed to work our way back up to third. And I found I found that line I was running, and I, I feel pretty I was I felt faster than... Um, uh, Zach there and uh, Trapper but those cautions like I just I just wish we would have kept going green there I, I feel like I could I could have challenged for the win there but uh all in all man it was it was a fun race yeah definitely a tough track here and uh trying to get through the field patiently I know we were talking to Trapper about it and you know it has that big diamond line but as you said those walls really jut mm -hmm. out at you so what really is the the best way to pass here mm -hmm. given the, the walls to the inside and kind of how you have to diamond the corner to stay fast uh just be patient you know what I mean I mean you could go in there and just give the guy a nerf bar but you know get your nose down there and just try not to light up the tires off the corner because if you can stay hooked up on exit and half it on the straightaway, man, you can pull pretty good, but it's tricky. There's a fine line there between blowing the tires off and keeping them hooked up. It's tough to do. It is tough to do, and you're one of the best at it, but a couple positions short tonight. We'll see what you can do next week. I believe it is Fairbury, if memory serves, so we'll see what happens there next week, but who do you want to give a shout out to for your podium tonight? Well, yeah, thank you guys, Primetime, here for hosting, and uh, you for announcing. I'm Master Melwright. Uh, my wife, my son. I got a shout out to uh, our real sponsors on our car too. Uh, Marshall Machinery, uh, Summit Site Contractors, Doug Speed Shop, Darrow Catering, Curbside Cravings, uh, Bill Steen Racing Shocks, uh, my brother. Um, that's about it. All right. Sounds good, man. Congrats on a solid run. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Too. Well, that is a broadcast here on the channel. Good run for the Master Millwright Big Block Series here. Again, a shout out to tonight's overall, tonight's race sponsor, Traps Sheet Metal and Roofing. Again, our overall sponsor here on the for the series, Master Millwright. And stay tuned for next week's race on Tuesday night. And of course, stay tuned to Thursdays on the channel for the Red Sox Racing League. Still looking to fill in a gap here on the channel one day during the week. So if you're looking for a broadcast, check us out at PT at primetimeracingtv.com. Send me an email, Corey, at primetimeracingtv.com. But that's a good broadcast here. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll catch you next time.